Welcome to this quick start video, getting started with KiVinci's What If Cash Flow and Forecasting Optimizer. What you're going to do is you're going to log into KiVinci, click the Reports and Libraries, and then the Libraries tab, and you will land on this page. Now, the first thing we want to do is just take a quick look at Help Text. So clicking the Using What If link here is going to bring up a Help Desk article for you. Now, again, we're focusing on Cash Flow and Forecasting Optimizer today, not the original What If tool the cash flow and forecasting optimizer. This article is going to give you an overview and a summary and detailed steps in a nice, clean, and easy to read outline. Today, we're going to be doing steps one through four. We just want to select a file and build our first model. Once you've gone through the help text, you're going to come back to this page. So let's start building our first model. So we're going to look at the knowledge base real quickly. And step number one says filter to an entity. We're going to log into KiVinci. We've done so. Click Reports and Libraries. We've done so. Click Libraries. We've done so. Navigate to the top of the page and click Filter Entities and filter to one entity and apply the filters. Okay. Click Filter Entities and you can see that we have two QuickBooks files selected. The forecasting tool only runs on one file for granularity purposes. Uncheck. Select the client or the QuickBooks file, if you will. This one's Model Merge Test File. Apply the filter. Step number one is now complete. At this point, we're ready to create the model. So looking at the help text again, we want to open the what if forecast template. We navigate to the DaVinci Gallery, search for the cash flow and forecasting optimizer, and click the preview button. As you can see, after we close the prior screen of filter entities, we are already sitting in the gallery. All you really have to do is type what, and it's going to show you um, the versions of what if. Now we are focused on cash flow and forecasting optimizer. So all we need to do at this point is click the preview button. And in a matter of seconds, the template will be created for you. Okay, at this point, the model is created. We just haven't set any options yet. So let's take a look at the help text and see what we're supposed to do. So we're going to click on the model save as button in the bottom left hand corner right here. We're going to enter desired name and save that model before we begin making any changes. So let's do that now. So I'm going to click the Save as Model button and I'm going to call this uh, Test Model A. And you can name the company uh, after the company or anything you'd like to. And you click Submit and now it is in the database. I can come back later and modify this model. It's like re entering a report, but it's actually called a model. So what I need to do now is set my options and my parameters. I'm going to make a note of this. The help text is here also. It's in the same, uh, same help text that there was when we looked at it in the libraries. Clicking this will bring up the help text from inside the model. I'm going to use one of these three modes, single, range, and seasonal. This is what these mean. I'm going to build a forecast based on a single month uh, as a historical baseline. I'm going to build a forward-looking model against an average of a range of months as a historical baseline. I'm going to build a seasonal model going forward, which gives me a month over month, year over year model, starting with a given month historically. So let's talk we're single. So you type single into this box. Now, the first thing we have to do is decide which is the, what is the first month that we want to forecast that we want to begin with. So I'm going to begin with by typing in July, J-U-L 2020. Note the formatting for the dates. It's important. You must follow this date string format. Now the next thing I'm going to enter it says, well, what month do you want to start with as your forecast? I mean, what are we going to, what baseline of months are we going to start with? So, well, we're not going to start with July because we're still in July at this point in time, the time of this movie, 2020. So I'm going to pick May of 2020 because uh, that was a pretty good average month. And I hit the enter key. The forecast is now created. These bars show you actual versus what if forecasts. So as I move through the Kivinci uh, template, the model, you can see I've got the chart of accounts for that file. I've got the May actual PL data for that file. I've got July actual data for that file. And July's what if is based on May's results. And it is based on May's results by changing these what if percentages. Well, you may say, you know what, um, a July is, uh, you know, maybe a kind of a bad month. And let's say historically, these are fictitious files. So let's say that um, you said um, my fee for service income, I don't think I'm going to do quite as well. You could put in 80 percent 
And what happens is it adjusts the what if value for that account for that month. You rinse and repeat. You do this for every month going forward, whatever you want it to be, for every account in the QuickBooks file that was synced out. And it will affect the running cash balance up here. Because what we're doing is we're starting with a snapshot of actual, but projecting forward based on it. Well, we know that as we move through this thing, and, and these are fictitious files, in the real world, this cash balance may be bleeding down very rather rapidly, and we don't want that to happen. We want to avert any of those kinds of issues. So we go through each one of these accounts, and we say, you know what? I'm looking through the chart of accounts down here, and oh, I've got consulting. I spent 12272 a month. You know, I might suspend that expense, so I type zero. And I enter zero in the months I actually care about going forward because I may bring it back later, but I'm certainly not going to do it now. And as I make these changes, they turn red and it affects the running cash balance. You go through this exercise. You can have as many models as you want, a pessimistic model or an aggressive model, an optimistic model, an average model. You can have as many models as you want. And you go through this making these changes to the results based on you know starting month well there's going to be some things that are going to possibly happen in the future that are not in your quickbooks file at this point and that's what this section the other accounts section is all about you know i i, I i'm going to get a ppp loan i believe so i type ppp loan in and i'm going to get that in um this month and uh, it's going to be seventy-five thousand dollars. so i'm going to key seventy-five thousand dollars in and when I do, it bumps the running cash balance that I'm going to see on these bars at the top. I see a running cash balance numbers down here. And you know, I got one other thing. I got a loan, I got a payment coming up, uh, and uh, I make that payment every quarter. And so uh, it's not in my QuickBooks file yet uh, in, in, in May, but I know it's coming. And I know it's coming this month. And I know it's $64,000. So I put a negative $64,000 in here because I know that I'm going to have that expense and I'm not going to get rid of that expense. And that's going to reduce the running cash balance. So we blend the actual history with the forecasted modification and custom um, anticipated income and expenses, if you will. And what happens is, is that the running cash balance what if is designed based on the historical starting point. Every time you log into the file, into this into this model, we're going to update the actuals as you move through the month. All you need to do is audit it. Now, let's say that you want to make other changes. You can change the, uh, you know, I, I might want to say, you know, my first forecasted month, I mean, that's cool, but I'm going to go to August. And if you eventually will change the dates that we're going to look at going forward. Maybe you want to change your reference month to June. So the nice thing about Kivinci is uh, the forecasting tool is that you can select the, any of these periods that you want out of the last 24 months. Sometimes you, a single month snapshot is not desired because you had wild swings, let's say. So this is when you'd use the range mode. You simply type range in, and the only difference is the same forecasted month. You're just going to pick a range of dates, and we're going to average it and put them here. So perhaps we might start with um, April of 2020 as my starting date. And we might uh, average through June of 2020. We had some swings there. Well, the forecast is now built on the average of the financials for April through June. Same uh, percentages will apply. You can have as many models as you want. So you may want to build one based on last month's forecast going forward, save it, uh, create, and then change these parameters to uh, the, the first six months of the year and save it. You can have as many models as you want. And again, seasonal is a little bit too complex for a very start, uh, for the startup video. The data is all here, but again, you would type seasonal in here and it will give you month over month, year over year values down here. That's really the difference here for those people that are highly seasonal or cyclical in nature. The Kivinci uh, cash flow and forecasting optimizer is extremely powerful and extremely flexible. There is nothing like it on the market. And as you begin to make these changes historically, and you begin to look at the data and analyze it and, and monitor it, more importantly, going forward, we're going to give you these performance metrics across the top here. We're going to summarize data for you. And you can simply just come in and make changes to the dates and see what your last month's actuals and your last month's what if were supposed to be. And as you scroll through the top here, we're going to give you the top, top five expenses last month and last month what if actual. How did I do? Well, this was actual and this is what if and 
and, and I didn't do so well, need to make adjustments to how I run my business to align more with this and less with this, right? So there's a lot of summary uh, analytics up here for you. And it's just as simple as logging in, taking a look, and changing a handful of numbers. We know you're going to enjoy this tool. It's very, very powerful. If you need help, help can always be found on the Kibinchi website or from in the app by engaging our customer success team. We hope you have a great day. We're here to help you. Have a good day.